Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Ha! That's a lie. <laughs> Holy cow! What happened to get a grip? What happened to overreaction? What happened to, hey, take a deep breath? How about count to ten? <laughs> Man, I think people have lost their cookies. Not computer cookies. I mean their own cookies. <laughs> the Bisco went flying out the window. And the Keebler, he's running for cover. Because guess what? Cookies are flying everywhere. Man, you can go on any cyber network, cyber social gathering, any type of informational system, texting, communication, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or any of them, and you can see people losing it. Wow! Do they give a class on this? In other words, what happened to people overreacting and not realizing that this technology that they have is affecting them? They have become cyber addicted. And I don't mean just by spending time on the computer, I mean reacting to the computer. In other words, they put their emotion into the words that they're reading, and emotion into the words that they're using. They're overreacting to what they're reading. They're imagining things that aren't there. They're actually getting involved in spiritually in something that's really deceptive that if you're really not, you know, kind of like prepared for it then what you're doing on these social networking sites is opening yourself up and saying, hey, I'm going to throw down my shield of faith and I'm going to throw down my helmet of salvation. I'm going to take off my pants. I'm going to take off my shirt. and I'm going to sit here in my boxer shorts, you know, and I'm going to play on the Internet. Well, okay, maybe not if you're a woman, but pretty close to the same thing. The point being is that you're not looking at these words as though they are powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. They're coming at you a different direction and they're causing you to lose it. Because A, misreading, B, misinterpreting, C, not asking questions. Those are the ABCs that I think are really affecting people right now in what I call in this religiosity episode the overreaction of Facebook. Meaning that face to face, people are losing it. You know, if somebody puts out, you know, a nice little picture and some comments underneath it just saying, well, that's okay. And the person says, what do you mean it's okay? I thought it was beautiful. I think it's great. This. I think it's whatever. You know, and little do they know that they're venting all of their anger and wrath and malice from some other occasion over here to the person that's reading it going, what brought that on? So you write back, you know, laughing out loud or rolling on the floor laughing and the person doesn't get it. You try to work with them to bring them down because you think, how could it be so wired and inspired from their, dare I say, energy drinks, coffee, caffeine, or whatever it is that they're doing at home, or texting when they're doing it on Facebook and social occasions, that they're somewhere out, you know, not reading what they're venting about? That's what's happening. The blunt truth of it is, is that not taking accountability for your own words, not taking accountability for your own actions, is causing this massive reaction to people missing the point of what's going on in this interaction of words. Remember, these are words. Whenever you're on something like, let's say, Facebook or Twitter, you're making comments to the public. It's as though you were standing on a street corner shouting out words. That is what Facebook and Twitter is. You are open to the public. Now. If you wanted to have a private audience with somebody, you would take them to a private conversation. That's why they call it private, because it's just between you and them, and then you could kind of get to know them and, you know, explore whether you want to be a friend with them or you explore whatever you want to do with talking to them and relating to them on a communicative device. You don't just react because you threw something out to the public and then somebody makes you mad about this and then somebody else comments on this and then suddenly you don't know what to read because you're not reading it correctly. There are lots of people now that have become addicted to Facebook. That's obvious. When Facebook can put out statistics that say that every time that they make a change, oh, 80% you know, leave, or well, no, 20% leave, but 90% come back, 
that's addiction. That's something that's not necessarily healthy, but it's something that you need to recognize that in all of addictions, there are certain attitudes, actions, and reactions that are going to happen. When a person is on a dry run, they can't wait to talk about all their sins, you know, because they're reliving their sin, because they're doing a dry run. They're just as addicted as they were when they were addicted. They know that in counseling. They talk about that. But you see, that's what's happening now on cyber addictions. Cyber addictions, people are overreacting rather than asking the questions. So what should you do? Be slow to speak, swift to hear, quick to listen. Slow to speak, swift to hear, quick to listen. Well, okay, two of those are the same. That's because you got two ears. <laughs> One mouth, two ears. Listen more than you speak. You get it? You should read something and then ask a casual question. Try to frame what you think the response will be so that you don't react to it. Don't walk away, get mad at your kids, come back in and then slap somebody on the internet. That's just as evil as slapping the child. It's wrong. You see, out of the tongue comes murders, uh, well, gosh, I can't even think of all the scriptures now, but murder and deceit and lies and and all this you know, evil stuff is all in the power of the tongue, life and death. And the same thing is true about the words you're using on the internet. You're killing people. People are getting mad, taking it out on their co-workers. Why? Because they read something on the internet? And then they go and get a gun and start shooting everybody. That's stupid. That's dumb. We need to get a handle on what we're doing because you see, if you provoke someone into doing that, God holds you accountable because you are accountable for every idle word spoken. You're accountable for all your words you're writing on the internet. Believe it or not, that is a record that is being kept, not just by the government or by Facebook or by Twitter or by whichever account that you signed on to, but by God in heaven. Yeah. He's going to ask you, well, well, why did you do that? What kind of attitude did you have when you were doing that? Did you know that attitude was communicated through that cyber expression? The spirit of it went out and it did accomplish its purpose, but it wasn't for good, it was for evil, and you were the one that provoked it? Or do you realize that when you clicked on that like thing you know, and you passed it around, you were presenting a lie to all those people and you were now becoming a liar? because you participated in that spirit of the lie so that you deceived all these people just because you passed it around? You see, there's more to life than just sucking your thumb. There's more to Christianity than sticking your fingers in your ear. You have to sit down and examine what you're doing as a born-again Christian. You are accountable to Jesus. You will be held accountable by God himself for what you have done in your body. All that you have done whether in thought, in mind, in attitude, or on Facebook. I'm sorry, but he can see your, and has your password. So, don't get so wrapped up in this religiosity thing that you get so over the top that you're suddenly losing friends left and right and that you know, you're always constantly punching back, you know, boom, boom. You know, somebody gives you a right cross and you go, whack, and you hit him back. That's not what it's about. Ask them why. That person who gave you a right cross, maybe they need help. Maybe the only way they have to express themselves is by antagonism at first. Then you get to know them and you find out that they really have some deep issues going on inside and they're really hurt and they're just venting and they need to talk about it. And you take them to a private conversation and begin to get to know them. Hey, I just want to talk to you find out, is something going on? Is there anything I could help you with? You know, like maybe, maybe, you know, the, Something, you know, I don't know what you were, you know, commenting on about these comments, but, you know, it seems like something's not quite right. What do you think? You know, and ask them. Try to get to know. People that have sometimes taken the time to get to know me, <laughs> of course, I always tell them, hey, look, if you're mad at me about something I wrote, check out my video. <laughs> I'm a jerk. I'm an idiot. I'm a fool for Christ. I'll talk about Jesus till the day I die. But don't take me serious. I mean, surely you can't take me serious. But, you know, I mean, in some degree, you know, my humor and my laughter and my joy in Jesus has a seriousness part to it because, yes, I'm trying to save people from hell. So I don't want anybody to, you know, wind up dying you know, without having the opportunity of getting to know Jesus. But 
I like to put that out there so that people can examine one of the videos and say, hey, you know, that guy's not so bad after all. You know, he's a sinner like I am. And I'll say, yes, no problem there. Man, I can lose my cookies just as easily as you can. Matter of fact, I do that every once in a while. Rarely, because I've been on the internet a long time and I've been trained to watch for the symptoms of cyber reactions, but likewise, also being trained that when I do make the mistake, I've been trained how to overcome that error and then to get to know the person and to promote in a certain direction what we call care confrontation. If you care enough to confront the issues, but you bring them to the caring, concerning attitude of the tenderness that you can reveal by way of Jesus, if you keep pointing yourself and submitting yourself underneath the person to bring and draw them out of their emotions, but at the same time steer them towards the direction you want them to go so that they are still venting on you. They're still, you know, throwing down those attacks, you know, trying to make you get distracted and react and comment on what they're saying. But you stick with what you're saying. If you have a message to give, if you have a love to share, if you have something positive to say about Jesus to that person, stick with it. Go step by step and let the person vent. Then as they keep hearing what you're saying, it's going to sink in. It gets past their defense mechanisms. It goes into their heart. It touches their heart if it's from the Word of God. It touches their heart if it's from the love of God. It touches their heart if it's from the Spirit of God. You already know the three things that it is. The Word, the love, and the Spirit. You can do that in every one of your responses. You can. Now, you don't have to. It's your choice. You can treat everything on Facebook and everything on Twitter as though it we're not a ministry and we're not, you know, your life and that your life isn't a ministry and that you weren't given, you know, your life back to you for eternity to be a ministry unto God that he should live in you and that you should live in him and that he would accomplish his purposes through you that you would be a living witness for him unto the end of the age. But maybe you don't believe that. Okay. <laughs> but I think that's what Jesus said. And so if you're a Christian, you've got accountability. You have responsibility. You're bringing light into darkness. It is a dark world out there. The cyber internet you know, kind of medium is a dark area. You need to bring light and make light of it. Have fun with it. Enjoy it. Participate in it. Yes. But don't overreact to it by getting caught up in comments. Don't get caught in the comments by thinking that they are personal. Don't personify Facebook. Don't face... Facebook as though it were someone coming at you and making you feel certain things. No. Sticks and stones may hurt, may break my bones, but words will always hurt me, I know, because they do. So let's be real. Yes, the power of the tongue has life and death in it. The power of the word has the ability to create things, doesn't it? And I'm not saying speaking into existence. So some Pentecostal, you know, going to say, "Hey, we're going to, you know, speak it, brother, and say it into existence, or declare it not to be in existence, and bind it, and shine it, and do all the other things that they remind you of." But rather, I would say there is some essence of truth to what they do talk about, and in that essence of it is where you react to it, and I react to it. You know, now obviously some things are over the top, like if somebody cusses you out and things like that, then you report them. I mean, that's what Facebook is about, but. On other issues that aren't really like that, get to know the person. Ask questions. Don't react to the comments. Remember, the comments are not the person. The person is not the comments. The person is responsible for their own comments, even as you're responsible for your own postings and comments. Be careful. You may find yourself leading someone astray without ever realizing that you have become either a false teacher a liar, a thief, a murderer, an adulterer, or someone who's just innocently playing games on the internet that doesn't realize, you know what, there are lies on the other side of it, and they're being affected, not just by what they're watching, but by you. Serious subject. Don't react. Try to act in a positive way. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. But even when you get provoked, if you blow it, work on it. Try to develop means to overcome it slowly. Don't try to accomplish it in one sentence. Take your time in getting to know the person. Put one line, one line, one line. Don't keep reacting. Take the patient way out. And if you have to, hey, Stick a thumb in it, like Romaine used to say. Or, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. 
Practice some games that you could do to get you away from the keyboard so you don't jump on it and stomp on someone's feelings. Because feelings are affecting the words you're using. And we all need to be careful of the words we use, including the way that we speak. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Maybe God is putting some light onto the subject.